<laughs> hey there! If you're planning on participating in some voluntary self-inflicted masochism by changing your 6.4 power joke oil cooler in your 2008 to 2010 stupid duty, you're going to want to start with the Ford factory coolant flush procedure, which I'm going to show you, sorta, with the shade treed hillbilly plumber version in this episode of I Hate Working on Cars. <laughs> Before we begin, you'll want to know what you're going to need to do the job. First, you'll want the instructions, which I printed out and taped to the side of my truck. I'll leave a downloadable link for you in the video description below. The instructions tell us we're going to need two quarts of Motocraft VC9 cooling system iron cleaner. If you have a commercial setup with an auxiliary heater, you'll want three quarts. The procedure also calls for motor oil, but that's just for lubing up the O-ring bung seals for the bung holes. I mean, the block drain plugs. You're also going to need coolant. Four gallons of Motocraft VC7B and four gallons of distilled water. You also want to pick yourself up an O-ring seal for the thermostat housing. I want to cover the whole flush start to finish just to keep it all in one video, but if you're going straight into the oil cooler replacement, you can stop short of refilling the cooling system, change out the oil cooler, and come back and wrap it up later. If you're hoping that the coolant flush procedure is going to unclog your oil cooler, don't get your hopes up. It didn't work for me, and mine wasn't clogged all that bad judging by the temperature delta. My truck never went into low power mode, it just threw the little green wrench light to tell me something unspecified was unhappy, and it wasn't until I plugged in Forescan and found the dreaded PO12F DTC code. In a future video, I'm going to show you how I changed the oil cooler with the cab on and my pants down. But anyway, let's get started and go through the flush step by step. Step 1, drain the cooling system. This is a pretty slow process, so you may want to start it the night before or early in the morning before you've had your coffee. Let's open up the cap on the degas bottle to create some ventilation. Then I'll crawl under the truck, stick on a rubber tube to the petcock drain outlet nurple, and I'll open up the radiator petcock with an 8mm hex wrench. Now I'll shove a couple buckets under the truck to catch all the coolant that comes out of the hose and anything that leaks out of the petcock. Step 2. Remove the thermostats. This requires the removal of the degas bottle for access. This is not too difficult to do. We'll start with the two 8mm bolts that secure the battery cables. For safety, you should disconnect the negative battery cable and bolt the truck batteries. Then, we're going to remove the 8mm bolt for the battery tie-down and yeet the battery. Now, I'll remove the 13mm bolts that secure the degas bottle slash battery holder slash vacuum tank assembly. Then I'll unclip the vacuum line and remove the small overflow return hose. Focusing now on the main hose, all I need to do is remove this little clip and work the hose off the degas bottle. To make room to squeeze the assembly out, I'll do the same thing with the upper radiator hose. I'll now carefully wrestle out the assembly, taking care to unclip and ultimately unplug the vacuum line at the underside of the battery tray. Damn it. F man. That's why you disconnect the battery. From here, it's just a matter of getting the thermostat out, which is just held on by four bolts on the other end of the upper radiator hose, which you'll want to remove. If you need more help than that removing the thermostat, I've found a great video by Diesel Tech Ron to walk you through it, and I'll link it in the video description. Step 3. Once we have the housing out, we need to pull both thermostats out, which we can do by just using a socket and body weight to compress the springs, twist, and remove. Step 4. Reuse the old thermostat housing gasket and reinstall the housing without the thermostats. At this time, you can also reinstall the degas bottle and the upper radiator hose. Step 5. Remove the left side block drain plug and allow all the coolant to drain out. Step 6. Clean up the bung, lube up the o-ring, and reinstall your bung into the bung hole. Torque it down to 177 inch-pounds. Now would also be a good time to close up the radiator petcock. 
Step seven, fill the cooling system now with two quarts of VC9 and distilled water. I'm using OEM Tools Coolant System Refiller Kit, which pulls a vacuum with shop air and fills up the cooling system without any air bubbles. You can find an Amazon affiliate link in the video description below. Step eight, fire up your truck and set it up so you can maintain 2,000 RPM for at least one hour. The directions tell you to use a tool that you and I will not have access to, so instead I use the hood prop rod. I also drove it around for another hour after that because America is the land of excess. Step nine, after allowing your truck to cool down so you don't turn yourself into Deadpool, do the whole tube radiator petcock drain deal like we did before and drain the VC9 slash distilled water solution from the system. Leave the petcock open for now. Step 10. Crawl back under the driver's side and re-remove the left side block drain plug. Step 11. Remove the starter. If you need some help with this step, I found another great video by Powerstroke Tech Talk with A-Rod. I'll link that video in the video description below. Step 12. Remove the right hand side block drain plug, which you'll find under the starter you just yeeted out. Step 13. Flush the cooling system of the VC9 solution. I went ahead and used tap water for this step since I don't really have any other options. Just stuff the hose in the degas bottle and let it rip until clean water pours out of every orifice. If you hold a mason jar up to the sun, you can see real good whether or not you got clean water. Step 14, backflush the heater core. The return hose for the heater core can be found behind the degas bottle, which you need to take out again since you'll be throwing the thermostats back in here in a minute. Just disconnect the return hose and shove your garden hose in there to flush. Step 15, repeat step 13. Rule number two. Fast run rule number one. Step 16. Close the radiator petcock. Step 17. Pull the thermostat housing back out. Throw in your new housing gasket seal. Reinstall your thermostats and bolt that sucker back in. This would also be the time to put the degas bottle assembly and battery back in. Step 18. Reinstall the right hand side block drain bone. Step 19, reinstall the starter. Step 20, reinstall the left hand side block drain bung. And step 21, fill the cooling system with a 50 50 mix of Motocraft VC 7B coolant and distilled water. I like to mix up four gallons at a time in a five gallon bucket while I use the aforementioned OEM Tools Cooling System Filler Kit to bleed the system of any air bubbles. I'll leave a link to that kit in the affiliate links in the video description below. And that'll do it. Hey, thanks for watching my video. If you found it marginally informative, hit the like button. Hell, smack the subscribe button while you're at it so Google can learn more about how to program the chip they'll implant in your brain the next time you visit your optometrist. See you next time.